Hello and welcome to Lisa Loves. I'm here um, a day early. I probably won't edit this today so it will go up on time. Today's the 31st of August. I'm not watching any movies this evening so I'm going to tell you what I've watched over the last month. It's not as much as usual but um, let me get on with letting you know. Let me move over so I've somewhere for my... Look at the state of my hair sticking up. Um, so I've somewhere for to put what I've watched. So first movie on the list on the second is The Call um, yes I remember this one now is this it was Halle Berry in this yes Halle Berry's in this I didn't actually realize until I had almost finished that I'd seen this before this is on Netflix right now it was released on 2013 and this is one about a 911 handler and you you all know how much I'm obsessed by 911 telephone calls I used to do it as a job myself Basically, the, the lead actress, Halle Berry, uh, makes a bit of a boo-boo and a bad judgment call on a telephone call that she takes. And this puts her off the line for quite a few years. She works in training in the actual call centre, but another call comes through that has a very familiar ring to it. And she has to get involved in dealing with this. And it involves a kidnapping. And um, she basically has to try and track down this girl and tell her what to do before she meets an end. Um, it was about 10 minutes from the end of this movie that I realised I'd seen it before. I did enjoy it, I thought it was good. Um, I've given it a 2.5 out of 5, which I think is pretty um, is pretty mean of me. Um, I maybe should have given it a 3. I think I give it a 2.5 because I don't like how it ended. I think the ending was ridiculous and that dragged it down for me. But up to that point I was really enjoying it. I would recommend it, I would say it's worth a watch. On the 3rd I watched a movie called The Hater. It says a duplicit. It says something that I can't pronounce. A duplicit. Oh, for flip's sake! What's that film that her with the curly hair? Duplicity. Duplicitous. Duplicitous. That's the word I'm trying to say. A duplicit. No. A young man finds success in the dark world of social media and smear tactics, but his virtual vitriol soon has violent real-life consequences. I really like this. I give this a three and a half out of ten. The young lad that's in this, oh Jesus, Lisa, why did you even look at that? Not going to try. You can see that on the screen. Not going to try to say that. He plays Thomas. He is hired by a company to basically find out crap about other people and bring them down. And um, a lot of other stuff kicks off. A lot of other stuff happens and things don't end very well for a lot of people. A lot goes on in it. You really need to sit down and watch this. You can't be watching it fiddling with your phone and stuff like that. You need to really watch, but it's a really dark world of stuff that goes on that none of us even know or think about, probably. But it seemed really within the realms of possibility to me and quite frightening. Um, I gave that a three and a half out of five. I really did enjoy that and I would really recommend it. The acting was superb as well. On the 4th I watched the movie Host, which I was seeing a lot of people talk about on YouTube. Um, I watched a couple of reviews. I don't watch reviews as much these days. I try not to. I like to sort of see things blind myself. And this is very short. It's 56 minutes long and it's about... It sort of gives me the impression a bit like Unfriended. It's a group of people having a conversation, like a video call. Um, they have someone there to do a seance. They take the piss a bit and then stuff starts to kick off and we see things happen in each of the, the different places. I would have liked to have seen it a bit longer. I would have liked it to have gone a bit more in depth. This was obviously put together quite quickly because it surrounds the the lockdown. Obviously it's, you know, it's got all that in it about Corona and they're all stuck at home and they're all video calling each other. So it's very in the moment in that respect. I just felt that they were going the right way. It was well done, but I wanted more and I wanted it to be longer. So yeah, I would recommend it though. Um, on the fifth Everest, um, I give that four out of five. This is actually a true story. It's something you all know I'm a big sucker for. Um, inspired by the incredible events surrounding a treacherous attempt to reach the summit of the world's highest mountain. It documents the awe-inspiring journey of two different expeditions challenged beyond their limits by one of the fiercest snowstorms ever encountered. Um, awesome, absolutely fantastic. Um, my head's going, your man that played the Joker, Joaquin, Fe Joaquin Phoenix? Jack Gil Why do I get Joaquin Phoenix and Jack Gyllenhaal confused all the time? 
Jake Gyllenhaal's in this. Um, he's not the main actor in it though. Sam Worthington's in this. Um, there's a lot, there's really good, Kira Knightley's in it. Got a very small part though. I'm not a big fan of Kira Knightley. She just cries all the time on everything. Um, and she cries in this too. Um, basically this is a true story and what happens in this movie happened in real life and it's just the lengths that people will push themselves to in the pursuit of achievement boggles my mind. They will push themselves to almost death, to beyond death, to, you know, everyone knows on Everest there are bodies that have never been able to be recovered that are still there. Um, there's pictures on the internet of them. They all have different nicknames, like I think one is named for the colour of his boots or his gloves. Um, it's really sad and it shows pictures at the end of the real people um, that were affected, that were portrayed in this movie. Um, and it's just, it was it was a really, really good piece of, of cinema. I really, really enjoyed it. I would thoroughly recommend that. Everest, it was released in 2015. Um, sad though. On the 6th, I watched a movie called Yummy. Oh, is that that zombie one? Yes. This was quite fun, actually. This is a zombie, zombie comedy um, about a woman that goes to a foreign hospital to have plastic surgery with her mother, who is also having surgery. The younger woman's husband is not a fan. He doesn't want her to have it done, but he's gone with her anyway. Um, she is having a breast reduction. We have all the usual smutty jokes of people, well, why would you have, look at what you've got, why would you want rid of them, ha ha ha, sort of thing. Um, but something is happening in this facility that perhaps they don't want the outside to know about. And people get to know about it and all hell kicks off. And we've basically got zombies running about this hospital with people that are waiting to have plastic surgery. Um, it's got fantastic gore in. It, it is really funny. Um, I wouldn't say it's Shaun of the Dead League, but it's worth a watch. It's definitely a funny movie. That's called Yummy. I give that a three out of five. And I'm not a fan of comedy horror. I, I think it works so rarely, but it, it was worth a watch. On the seventh, I watched The Deep End of the Ocean. Yes, i have seen this years ago. I watched it again, 1999, Michelle Pfeiffer. All I did was spend the time shouting at the TV about how stupid she was. Um, she goes to a work conference with her two young children, one of which is three, and she leaves her young son, who I don't remember what age he was. Is he like seven or eight? So he's younger than Isaac is now. And she leaves him in charge of the three-year-old. And lo and behold, someone kidnaps her child. And the movie is her looking for him and this is not a spoiler it's the main crux of what happens they relocate and someone shows up into their life that she is convinced is her missing son but why would you go to do something for work in a really really busy hotel lobby and leave your young child in care of your even younger child and leave him with that responsibility and then someone nicks him I mean, I wouldn't leave Isaac, who is nine, on his own in a strange, busy place. I mean, really? So I spent most of the time kicking off about that. Um, where are we now? On the ninth, I watched Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. Background to that, Isaac is reading the Harry Potter books at the moment, and each time he finishes a book, we watch the movie. Um, I have seen all of the movies before. My memory is so spectacularly poor, I watch them and remember enough all, so it's like watching them all again. I'm really enjoying them. I'm hoping when we next get back to Florida in a couple of years time, I'm hoping that we get to do Universal this time um, and it will be that bit extra special having looked into all the background of all the Harry Potter books and stuff. So yeah, you, you've got to love Harry Potter. It's they're, they're awesome. So, And I have to say Maggie Smith as reading the books, Maggie Smith as, what's her flipping name in the book? Maggie Smith as Mrs McGonagall is just some of the most superb casting ever. Having read the books and now seeing her cut, just fantastic. You couldn't have got anyone better. On the 9th, I watched a new Netflix movie. No, it's not new. It's just popped up on Netflix called The Judge. It's a 2014 movie with Robert Duvall, Robert Downey Jr. Um, that will have been what made me watch it. Basically, Robert Downey Jr. comes back to his hometown for his mother's funeral. Him and his father, who is a judge, he's like a really high up um, lawyer. Very successful lawyer, very well off lawyer. His marriage hasn't really worked out. His father is a judge. Him and his father don't see eye to eye, don't have a very good relationship. 
it comes back to the town and it, we've got that interplay between him and his dad and the relationship, the sort of love-hate thing they've got going on. But then something happens where his father needs his help, but his father doesn't want to ask for his help. But they are forced together in this legal battle that his father has to undergo. Um, and that's what, what it's about. It's about their relationship. It's about a court battle. It's, you know, it's basically a drama. Um, if you like that kind of thing, check it out. I gave it a three out of five, which is pretty standard for me. <clears throat> Um, on the 12th, this was very good. I watched a movie called The Nightingale. <clears throat> this is a new one on Netflix. This one really touches me. <clears throat> In 1825, a 21 year old Irish convict, she, I think she stole bread or something, chases a British soldier through the rugged Tasmanian wilderness. So obviously back then they sent prisoners to Australia, Tasmania, um, and the prisoners back then done next to nothing. Um, Bent on revenge for a terrible act of violence he committed against her family, she enlists the services of an Aboriginal tracker who is also marked by trauma from his own violence-filled past. This is a fantastic movie. It shows the racism that was alive in everyone, now even our hero here, who were completely behind, who goes to hell and back, and she wants to get revenge on one of the army officers. Um, even she... Um, they call the Aboriginals boy and she's like a young girl and he's maybe a man in his 40s and they're very racist and her whole attitude towards him they're treated like they're animals and that they, they'll they eat you at a moment's notice and the way these people are being treated and I mean it's their home and there's such moving scenes in it oh my god it was so moving where anyone that encountered them she had to, I'm, I'm going to get emotional thinking about it, I have to apologise. Um, anybody they encountered, she she grew to have a, like a, they grew to respect one another. But when they encountered anyone else, when he was helping her track across Tasmania, she had to have him walk in front of her and she would point a gun at him as if he was her sort of like ward or prisoner as such because she was white and he was Aboriginal and why would she be with him? And there's scenes where there's other white men uh, and they just, without a second thought, shoot these Aboriginal men for nothing, for speaking out of turn. But the one scene that really, there, there are several scenes that are really distressing. It's a very, very sad movie. It's very violent in places. But there's a scene where an old white couple are driving, a th I think they were in like a horse and cart type thing, and, and they offer a lift to the two. Um, but not only that, they actually invite them back to their home to eat. And as the girl sits down at the table with them, the, the mother's, or the woman's a bit, she's not too happy, but the man is of decent stock. He's a northerner, he's, he's northern, he must be from Yorkshire, I think, from the accent. And he's, he's a decent, you know, bloke. He's trying to help. And his wife's sort of tolerating it, and she sits down at the table to eat soup with them. And the boy, as they call him, the man, the Aboriginal man, is sat on the floor in the corner, just sat there, because that's, that's what he's used to, while they eat. And he asks him to come and sit at the table with them and have a bowl of soup. And it sounds ridiculous, but it got to me so much, the complete and utter disbelief in this man's face that he was being treated the same as everyone else. And, oh, it really, really got to me. And there's this really moving scene where he's crying and he's trying to tell them, this is my home. This, you know, he's not trying to be nasty and he's not trying to say, people, you white man did this to me, white man did that. But he's not saying any of this. He's just saying, this is my home. He's trying to tell them, I have a right to be. I have a right to stand side by side with anyone else. This is where I'm from. And it really, really got to me. Um... I would really recommend it if you can sort of bear things like that coming from the sort of history. I I know I'm not comparing sort of the Irish situation with what people have gone through like in Native America where people were chased out of their lands and obviously the Aboriginal people and what they went through um, when Northern Ireland was undertook by British occupation. A lot of landowners same thing happened, they were thrown out of their lands, they starved, they died in famines, they 
nobody was allowed to own any land. It's a long and horrible history, but basically colonization is a big bugbear for me. I, I don't, I think if a country wants to regain its independence, if it wants it back, it should be allowed it back. I don't think any other country should be allowed to take by violent force another country. I don't, it's where all the troubles came from in Northern Ireland. I don't like it. Although in saying that, I have to back it up with, I don't agree with any violent acts from terrorists to get what they want either. So you have to be so careful what you say or people will think you're a bloody terrorist sympathiser. But yeah, that, the Nightingale, beautifully, beautifully made um, piece of film. I would highly recommend it. It is sad and it is... And my new dog is going ape shit out here. If you don't know, I have another channel where I do vlogs. I don't know if anyone's interested, but if you are, we got a new dog in the last couple of weeks called Joy. She's outside barking the house down right now. And today is her and Molly's joint birthdays. So that's just a little bit of personal knowledge for you. So um, on the 12th, I watched Welcome to Mercy, which was awful. Can't even remember. Single mother begins to experience symptoms of stigmata. She seeks, if you don't know what that is, it's where you get the hands and feet holes like Jesus on the cross sort of thing. She seeks the help of a local priest and nun to help her understand what is seen and unseen. I remember naff all about this. So someone gave it a three and a half, so they obviously liked it a lot more than I did. Chiller Child, if anybody knows who that is, really liked that. I remember nothing about it, so it couldn't have been that good, but it couldn't have been abysmal because I would have given it a one, but I've given it a two. Um, on the 13th, another movie from Netflix called Only. After a comet releases a mysterious virus that begins to kill all, yes, all the women of the world, a young couple's relationship is severely tested. Basically, all women have to hide because if they see you, they'll kill you. Because only women can get this virus and they're trying to eradicate it. How they're going to continue the human race is anyone's guess. But it's basically one of those sort of like... Walking Dead type movies. It's, it, well, it's not zombies, but it's like end of the world, everything's going to hell in a handbasket, that sort of thing. Um, they hide out both the illnesses and the savages who hunt the remaining women in their over-sterilised apartment. Ultimately, the Jew escapes their self-imposed quarantine and head to the wilderness. And I have no idea even how that ended. That's how much of an impact it made on me. Um, not that many this month. Oh, I've still talked for 19 damn minutes. Um, Project Power on the 21st. I like this. This was a really easy watch. Um, I give this a three and a half out of five. What would you risk for five minutes of pure power? This is about a pill. Do you remember that movie that um, Brandon, no, what's him with the blue eyes that was in A Star Is Born? You know the one I mean. Him, that really good looking one. He was in a movie called Limitless, where you take a pill and it just, you, you get, you know, superpower. You don't know what power you're going to have. I'm not even going to tell you half of the stuff that happens because it would spoil it for you. But the police are trying to track down who's supplying these. They're very dangerous. There's a whole drugs ring going on. Um, Jamie Foxx is in this. Joseph, Joseph Gordon-Levitt is in it. Dominic Fishback. Rodrigo Santoro. Um... Machine Gun Kelly's in this, and his his part's pretty freaky, it has to be said. But I really like this. I felt it was really easy to watch. I'm not usually a big fan of action, but this had the right mix of action and slight spooky horror for me. Um, I would recommend. I really, really liked it. Three and a half out of five. Project Power. So, cops. Weird pills doing weird stuff to people. Um, lots of people that you think you know what they're all about, and then you find out you were wrong. But, good. Um, 22nd, another Harry Potter. Don't really need to say much more. Um, Isaac finished Chamber of Secrets. We watched it. Um, that reminds me, I've got another one. Prisoner of Azkaban needs added to this. We've watched that too. Um, on the 23rd, I watched The Sleepover. No, I didn't. I was doing something on the laptop and The Sleepover, we started to watch. It was on in the background. Oh, it was awful. I put it on because it's a new movie on Netflix. I think it's a PG. It was for something for Isaac to watch. It's like a PG Mr. and Mrs. Smith with family. They find out that the, the mother is some sort of, what does it say? Two siblings discover their seemingly normal mom is a former thief in witness protection. Mom is forced to pull one last job and the kids team up to rescue her over the course of an action-packed night. It's all right. 
Some people might love it. I just find it really cheesy and predictable and just not funny. Joe Man... He was in True Blood as a werewolf. Joe Manganello. He's a bit fit in it. But besides that, I wouldn't watch it. Um, we're almost there. Outcry. Oh, yes. I'm going to be doing a video about this for this channel. Um, I just need the time to properly research this. This is a five-part documentary on... I think it's is it on Sky. I watched it on Now TV, if you're in the UK. This is about a high school football star called Greg Kelly, who was convicted of the sexual assault of two young children. There's a lot to this. He went to prison. He got out of prison. He was maybe going back into prison. I'm not going to tell you how it ended in case you want to see it, but it it's you will be completely blown away by the ineptitude of the police in this. If you like making a murderer, watch this. Um, it's maybe not the same like blow you away, oh my god, but what you find this guy has been convicted on, you will not believe how it came about and I, I do want to do a video on this, um, so if you're interested, keep an eye out for that, but I would recommend it. The next two I haven't rated here, I haven't been back in the app. I see you. All oh, right, I watched this because Helen Hunt's in and I love Helen Hunt. The perfect female role, I feel, that I love more. Apart from Clarice Starlin in, in, in Silence of the Lambs, which just... Mwah. Um, as good as it gets with Jack Nicholson, Helen Hunt's role. I just love them together in that movie. I think it's... Oh, I loved it. Why this woman doesn't get more acting parts, I will never know. I love her. 12-year-old goes missing. Lead investigator struggles to balance the pressure of the investigation and troubles with his wife. Face it, she has an affair. Facing a recent affair, great strain is put on the family that slowly gnaws away at Jackie's grip on reality. Right, but something's happening in their home, which they can't make sense of. You may think, oh, is this a spooky paranormal type thing? No, I'm going to tell you straight off, no. I thought it might be. Um, the tagline is evil hides in plain sight. I enjoyed this. It wasn't amazing, but it was good. I love Helen Hunt. I will watch anything with her in it. Um, I would recommend this. I, I'll give it a rating now. I haven't actually rated it yet. I will give that a three and a half out of five. Recommend. On Netflix right now. The Bridge Curse. Right, I need to delete that because I only got to watch half of that because the dogs wouldn't behave themselves and it's Chinese, it's subtitled, so can't put that on. I need to add um, Prisoner of Azkaban on here, um, which obviously it's Harry Potter. It'll get a 4 out of 5 because we all like Harry Potter. I think I watched it on, watched it yesterday. So there we go. That is what I have watched in August. So <clears throat> that's what I've watched this month. Um, anything that you think I should check out, that I should watch. Cinema, I think, is open here now. We haven't been yet. I want to see Bill and Ted's new movie. I can't remember what it's called. Really badly want to see it. What I want to do is get Isaac to watch the first two first because I'm taking him with us. I think he'll enjoy all the Bill and Ted type humour. I know I will. I think from the actual, from what I've heard, Movie Massacre saw it. Um, and he absolutely loved it and um, I think if he loved it, he would be a fan of the originals like me. I think if he's happy with it, I think I'll be happy with it too. I think the guys look amazing. I've seen obviously publicity images. I haven't even watched the trailer because I don't want to see anything. Um, but the guys look great. They don't look hardly different at all from how they looked back way back in the day. And if anything, Keanu Reeves just gets more attractive the older he gets. What is that about men? Men get better looking the older they get. I mean, you know, look at Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise is nearly 60. Or is he 60? That's madness. I mean, these men you look at, it's like, there's, oh, it's not fair. I mean, they, they say women are, are past it when they're out of their 30s. But men just get better and better with age. It's not fair. And I don't agree that women are past it when they're out of their 30s. Or I may as well go bury my head in a hole. But there we are. That's what I've watched this month. Any recommendations gratefully received. I will get back to your comments. It does take me a while as life has a way of getting in the way but I do read all your comments. I do very much appreciate them. I will get back to you and um, thank you for watching. Over a night from Lisa Lives.